All right, talking to the doctor today about hip replacement and, and how you can preserve your hips. You know, having a hip problem can lead to major problems if you're not treated. Teenagers and adults, pay attention. You should look into hip preservation. All right. Dr. Derek Kelly is with the Campbell Clinic joining us now to talk about it because we were just talking about it. You usually think of older people when you think of hip replacement and hip issues. So why teenagers? Well, that's the point. We're trying to prevent the hip problems that the older people will get. A lot of the problems that lead to arthritis in the elderly start off as problems in children and teenagers, and we can address those problems hopefully earlier right. to prevent that later in life. How do you know if you're one of those folks who may have problems and, or, or maybe making it worse by something you're doing now? Yeah, it's difficult to diagnose these problems. The most common thing when you have a hip pain is a pulled muscle or a strain, right. but that should last no more than a few days or a few weeks. If you have persistent daily pain that goes on for weeks on end, not treated with simple anti-inflammatories, it might be one of these other issues. Is, is there a particular exercise or sport that makes it worse? Exercise and sports can make this worse. Right. Any type of sport can do it if you have the underlying condition. It's usually not the sport that causes the problem. There's a problem yeah. already there and the sport makes it worse. All right, so, so how do you know if you have this underlying condition, if you're not right. having any pain or anything? You probably won't know if you're, if you're not having pain. It's right. really difficult to know unless you've had a problem when you were a child. If you had a problem like hip dysplasia or perthes or a slipped epiphysis, mm -hmm. these are all diagnoses that people might know they have. If you have any of those issues and you know it in your history, it may be an issue. Or if you've had a number of uh, grandmothers or grandfathers who've had hip replacements, it may be a problem that runs in the family. Should you ask your pediatrician or your doctor? That's the can best they, place. Can they check just by feeling your hip? Sometimes by physical exam, yeah. if they know what to look for, you can pick up some information, but the best way is to get an x-ray. Now, this is a, a hip bone, Well, I this guess, is right? This is a, a model of a normal hip, and this is what you would expect, a nice round ball, a nice smooth round mm -hmm. socket. People who have these conditions have abnormalities in the way the ball or the socket has formed. Mm. Uh, this would be a normal hip, uh, and, and people who have these issues, there are abnormalities that you'd see in this yeah. area. Yeah. So when you do a hip replacement, I've always wondered, what part do you replace? You replace the ball, and and the socket. Just you, like a knee replacement? Uh, just like a knee replacement. Just replace. the You're, joint part, Just right? the joint part, that's right. Okay. It seems like it would be pretty painful. Uh, the surgery itself? Yes. Oh, yeah, the <laughs> surgery can be painful. Of course, the yeah. condition that leads to the surgery is also quite painful. All right, folks, so if you have, again, the warning signs real quickly that warning you might need to see your doctor. Pain that persists more than a few weeks, not treated with simple rest and anti-inflammatories, or if you have family history mm -hmm. or family uh, history conditions. Just ask your doctor to check out ask your, your hips, you know. Ask your doctor to check out your hip and possibly get an x-ray. All right. All right, doctor, thank you so much for thank joining you very us. Much. All Appreciate right, I hope it. you learned a little bit this morning. And uh, we'll be right back after this. Actually, let me tell you about this. Tennessee's Department of